Dear students, in the last class we started evidences for biological evolution. Evidences is anything that can be used to prove something. The evidences are classified into six categories. First one, evidences from taxonomy. Second, evidences from biogeography. Third, evidences from paleontology. Fourth one, anatomical evidences. And fifth one, embryological evidences and the fourth one molecular evidences. Out of the six categories, the first two categories not given in our syllabus, but these two categories are included in NEET syllabus. The first one evidences from taxonomy. Pyrogenic tree of classification provides a proof of common ancestors. Second one evidences from the biogeography. Distribution of the plants and animals provides a proof for biological evolution. Third one, evidence from paleontology. Paleontology is study of prehistorical life of an organism through fossils. These fossils are true witness of evolution. Fossilization is the process by which plants and animals remains stored or preserved in the sedimentary rocks. These are studied under three categories. First one, plants and animals remains. Plants and animals remains. Second one, cast and molds. Third one, petrification. About these things we studied in the yesterday class. Today I am going to explain anatomical evidences, embryological evidences and molecular evidences. First evidences from anatomy or anatomical evidences. Studying functional anatomy is called tectology. What is the name? Tectology. Studying of functional anatomy is called tectology. Different and plants and animals shows many dissimilarities in their structure and some similarities in their characters. This relationship studied under five categories. The first one homologous organ, second analogous organ, third vestigial organ, fourth one connecting link and fifth one atavism. First we want to see the homologous organ. The first the term homologous was introduced by Rich and Woven in 1843. Rich and Woven in 1843. In vertebrates, comparative anatomical studies reveal a basic plan in various structures such as four limbs and iron limbs. Four limbs of all vertebrates show different or almost similar bones. Four limbs of vertebrae show almost made up of similar bones such as humerus, radius and ulna, corpus, metacarpals and phalanges. The radius bone is present in the in our hand the upper arm and radius and ulna is present in the lower arm of the our hand. Carpals is present in the wrist part, in the wrist part. Metacarpals are present in the palm region and phalanges are present in the fingers. So these all similar bones are present in the organism. First we want to know what is homologous structure. The structures which are similar in origin, the structures which are similar in origin but perform different functions are called the homologous organ, are called the homologous organ. The structures which are similar in origin but perform different function is called the homologous organ. It shows divergent evolution, it shows divergent evolution that means homologous organs are giving divergent evolution. 
or adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation. For example, we can see in the plants as well as animals. In plants, thorns of bougainvillea and the tendrils of the cucurbita. The thorns of the bougainvillea and the tendrils of the cucurbita. The thorns are giving the protection from the grazing animals for bougainvillea. That means bougainvillea getting the protection from grazing animals with the help of the thorns. Tendrils are giving useful for the climbing. That means in the cucurbita. Their function is different. One is the protection function, another one is the climbing function. But the structure is similar. That means both also modified as an axillary bud. Both plants also modified into axillary bud. That means the two plants are started from the axillary bud. So, structure is same, function is different. Second example, mouth parts of the insects in the animals. The third example, beaks of birds. That is one of the classical example of the adaptive radiation. Next, testis in male and ovary in the female. The four limbs are useful for the walking. For example, the cat, four limbs of the cat and the lizards of the four limbs, that means four limbs of the lizards are helpful for the walking. The four limbs are modified as a flippers in the whale, that function like a paddles. Four limbs of the bat modified as a wings for flight. Heart and brain of the di of different vertebrates are example for the homologous organs. The classical example of the homologous organ is we can see them the limbs of skeleton or limb skeleton. We can say that is what is limb skeleton. The limb skeleton of all vertebrates. Second one, analogous organs. Organisms having different structural patterns, but similar function is called the analogous organs. It shows convergent evolution. It is otherwise called homoplastic organ. It is otherwise called homoplastic organ. Analogous organs means the organism having different structural pattern but similar function is called the analogous organ. For example, we can take in plants sweet potato and potato. Sweet potato is root modification, potato is a stem modification. Both also useful for the storage of the food. That means storage function is same. But development that means structure, one is the root modification, another one is a stem modification. Another example, wings of the butterfly. The wings of the butterfly is the analogous organs to birds wings and birds wings, bat wings and birds wings. Bat is coming under the mammal, the birds are coming under the eaves. So, the butterfly wing is analogous to the bat and birds wing. Third one, eyes of the octopus and mammals. The structures are different, the functions are same. Gills of the prawn and lungs of the human. Another example, hands of the human and the trunk of the elephant. These are the example for the analogous organs. These are the evidences for the biological evolution. Next, third one, vestigial organs. What is vestigial organ? The degenerate or unfunctional or rudimentary structures of the animals are called the vestigial organ. Which organs are not well developed? That organs are known as the vestigial organ. The vestigial organ may be considered as remnants of structure, a remnants of the structure. Remnants means remaining of the structure. These structures are well developed in ancestors, but it is disappeared in course of evolution because of or due to non-utilization, not using for any purpose. So, it is becoming what a rudiment in condition, somebody it is not disappeared in the adult stage. For example, for this one, human appendix is a remnant of cecum, remnant of the cecum. So, the appendix are useful in the herbivorous animals, that means appendix is well developed and functional in the herbivorous animals like a rabbit, because its diet has a more cellulose. So, the cecum is, that means appendix region is helpful for the digestion of the cellulose. But this portion is not well developed in human being. 
because in our diet has very less amount of the cellulose. So, the function of the cecum is very less. So, it be degenerate and become very small size structure that is called the vermiform appendix. It is a vestigial organ in our body. The Robert Wader Schein, the Robert Wader Schein published a list of 86 vestigial organs in human body. How many vestigial organs? 86 vestigial organs in human body. I given here some examples. First one, coccyx, that is a tailbone. The tailbone is not present, not well developed in human body. Second one, canine teeth. The canine teeth is well developed in the carnivorous animals. And the third molar teeth, that is called the wisdom teeth. That is called what teeth? Wisdom teeth. Sometime it will develop. Maximum it is not developing. Ear muscles, body ear, nititating membrane, mammary gland in the males, MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone in human. These are the vestigial organs in human body. Some example I given in the animals also. The iron limbs and the girdle of the python. Girdle of the python and the iron limbs of the python are absent. Because it is not using that uh, organs. Split bone in limb of the horse. Wings of the flightless birds. You know the archaeopteryx. It is a flightless bird. That means connecting link. The eyes of the cave salamanders. Salamanders are coming under the amphibians. These are the example of the vestigial organs. The connecting links. Organisms which possess the characteristic of two different groups. The organisms which possess different characteristic of different groups. That is called the connecting link. Example, virus. Example, viruses. The connecting link between the living and non-living things. Euclina. Between the plants and animals. The connecting link is uh, between the plants and animals. Third one, proteospongia. That is connecting link between protozoa and porifera. Peripetus, very important organism. It is a connecting link between the annelida and arthropoda. Neoplina. It is a connecting link between the annelida and mollusca. Balanoglass is giving the connecting link between the non cardata and cardata. Dipnoi, that is a one of the lung fish. It is giving the connection in between the fishes and amphibians. Archaeopteryx, that is giving connect connection between the reptiles and birds. Prototheria, egg laying mammals. It is giving the connecting link between the reptiles and mammals. Next category, atavism, that is a reversion. Sudden reappearance of some ancestral characters or features is called the atavism. Sudden reappearance of some ancestral features forming or present in the or appear in the animal is called the atavism. Example, canine teeth, extra nipples, more than two nipples, dense body hair. These characters are one of the atavism characters. Some newborn babies birth with the ancestral characters. For example, canine teeth and body hairs. That is example, lion's boy of Russia. Next, embryological evidences. Embryologist deals study of development of an organism from egg to adult. Embryology deals study of development of organism or individual from egg to adult. The detailed study of these organisms, that means embryological development, shows very close resemblance in organisms. Example, heart development in all vertebrates. First, a tubular, that means a pair of tubular structures are forming. Later, it develop into two chambered heart in fishes, three chambered heart in amphibians, and incomplete four chambered heart in reptiles, and complete four chambered heart in crocodiles and mammals. This tubular structure of heart is common ancestor characteristic of all vertebrates. Basic rule of embryonic development given by German biologist Carr Ernest von Bayer. Ernest Endich Haeckel propounded the theory that is called the theory of recapitulation or biogenetic law. The biogenetic law states that individual organisms in its development, that is ontogeny, turns to repeat the 
stages passed through by its ancestors. That means the organisms receive the some character from the ancestors. That is called the phylogeny. So this law is called ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. The embryonic stage of higher animals resemble the characteristic of the ancestors. For example, tadpole larva of the frog, it resembles the fish. So, the fish is the ancestor of the amphibians. This biogenetic law is not universal. Some animals do not recapitulate the ancestral characters. That means, some animals do not recapitulate the ancestral characters in any animals. So, for example, in human beings, the human being embryo is recapitulate the embryonic history, but not in the adult history. Another one example we can see, the embryo of the fish, salamander, that means amphibians, reptiles, that means tortoise, the embryo of the fish, salamander, tortoise, cheek and mammals. These are started its life from one cell or single celled zygote. It undergoes the divisions that is a cleavage. Then it produces the blastula, change into gastrula and triploplastic layers. These all characters indicate the above mentioned animals are evolved from the same ancestors. From these examples we can see the biological evolution is started from the or that is transformed from the one organism to another organism from the ancestors. The last evidence, molecular evidence. The molecular evidence is the process of changes in the sequence composition of molecules. Sequence composition of the molecules such as RNA, DNA and proteins across the generation. Principle of evolutionary biology and population genetics are used to explain the changes of the molecules. That means changes in the RNA, DNA and proteins. Useful advancement of molecular biology in proteins. The useful advancement of molecular biology is protein. Other molecules that control the life processes. The slight changes are takes place this concerned molecules. That means the changes are takes place in DNA, RNA or protein. That is called the molecular clock. Cytochrome C and RRNA, these two also, one is useful for the respiratory path and other one is useful for the protein synthesis. Cytochrome C is used in the respiratory path and RRNA, cytochrome C, cytochrome C, respiratory path, RRNA, protein synthesis. These two molecules are used to study the biological evolution. In this class, I explained the evidence for the biological evolution under the three topics that is a embryological evidences and anatomical evidences and molecular evidences. Under the anatomical evidences, we studied the five categories, homologous organ, analogous organ, connecting link, vestigial organ and atavisms. Under the embryological evidences, we studied number of the examples with the help of the embryos and the help of the biogenetic law that is called the antigeny by spilogeny or recapitulation theory. And molecular evidence, we studied about the RNA, DNA and the proteins, how these are the involving in the biological evolution. In the next class, we will see theories of the evolution. If you have any doubt in this lesson, you call me and I will clarify your doubts. Thank you my dear children.